Come join the Quatchtrek team as we explore cryptic coloration. Millions of years before the word camouflage was coined, the art of concealment was playing out on the age-old stage of evolution. Natural selection forced organisms to develop cryptic coloration as a defensive and or tactical weapon to disguise their appearance and blend in with their surroundings. This survival trait allows prey to hide from predators and for predators to stealthily advance on their prey. I remember as a kid the excitement of finding a walking stick on a branch. So alien in looks, yet perfectly designed for concealment. Some stick insects actually have lichen-like markings to make their camouflage disguise even more complete. To seal the deal, Stick insects actually rock back and forth as they walk to better imitate twigs swaying in the wind. The insect world is filled with many such camo adaptations, too numerous to document. Native to North America, the tulip tree beauty moth can be nearly impossible to spot when resting and flattened against tree bark. This is due to the brown and ivory markings on its wings. Interestingly enough, in 1845, 99% of the English peppered moth population was white with black spots, with only 1% being solid black. In a short span of 50 years, 99% of the population was black, with only 1% of the moths now being white with black spots. What caused this evolution? Was it a natural evolution, or was it something the moths initiated? Investigating further, during the Industrial Revolution in the mid to late 1800s, black soot from coal-burning factories settled on trees, turning their bark black. With this change in the environment, being a light-colored moth lost its advantages. Instead, being darker was the more desirable one. Over time, black moths became more common than white ones since they no longer stood out against the trunk and thus avoided being a meal. But with the reduction in coal pollution over the past century, the moths have returned to the original white with black spots. The colorful and graphic markings on the owl butterfly are an adaptation known as Batesian mimicry. This adaptation is used to fool predators into thinking they were actually allies, not allies. Since owls are a known predator of these small birds, their natural instinct is to steer clear of the gaze of an owl. Speaking of owls, can't always trust what they tell you. The horned owl is the master of the art of camouflage. Like the moths, the patterns on the owl's feathers help them blend into the trees almost seamlessly. The owl stalks its prey from high branches at night, remaining undetectable. Of course, whoo, whoo, can really see them at night anyway. Native to Madagascar, the leaf-tailed gecko is a master of disguise. In the presence of predators, it is able to flatten its body against the tree, hiding its shadow, essentially becoming virtually invisible. The three-toed sloth, on the other hand, is so slow that algae can grow on its fur, helping it blend in with the forest. The only defensive mechanism the sloth has is its claws. However, its slow movement and camouflage make them very difficult for predators to spot. Spot? Did somebody mention spots? The spots of a leopard helps it blend in with the tree trunks and leaves of the forest, making it difficult to spot when viewed from below. 
Using the element of surprise to its advantage, the leopard will pounce from its hiding spot in the tree when it detects its prey. Primates are unique mammals when it comes to the variety of habitats and ecological niches they inhabit globally. Their hair has adapted to allow them to conceal themselves in a diverse range of habitats, from the dense rainforests, where some have evolved to have orange or darkly colored coats, or the open and bright habitats where they tend to have lighter colored hair. The golden lion tamarind's vibrant orange coloration against a green background make us humans go, what? But most of the mammalian predators these tamarinds encounter are dichromates, are red, green, colorblind. To them, and most of the tamarinds themselves, their orange coloration blends in perfectly with the bright green leaves of trees. Often, even closely related primates can exhibit an amazing variety of color patterns. These three species of guenon, monkeys, are all in the same genus but yet they have remarkably diverse and strikingly different hair color and patterns. The current belief is around 1.2 million years ago, a mega drought hit the earth. This change forced the early humans to adapt to a more arid and open environment. This environmental change likely increased medium wave UVB radiation. The increased exposure to sunlight initiated an evolutionary change that caused the development of skin pigmentation to protect against this additional radiation from the sun. From about 1.2 million years ago to less than 100,000 years ago, all archaic humans, which included early Homo sapiens, were dark-skinned. Looking at ourselves as a species, the vast array of variations in skin and hair color is incredible. This diversity is felt to be directly related to the loss of our body hair some five to seven million years ago. The current thought is that in our transition to bipedalism, we needed better heat dissipation. By losing body hair, we were better able to control our temperature by sweating. However, without the protection of a full body of hair, we had to evolve or develop other protections against potential sun damage. As Homo sapien populations begin to migrate, the evolutionary constraint keeping skin dark decreased proportionally to the distance north the population migrated. As this northern migration progressed, the need for clothing to protect against the colder climates became a necessity. Since the majority of the material used for early clothing was derived from animal hide, at some point, they realized that they could use these hides as a form of camouflage to get close to their prey. The indigenous peoples of the North American Plains had a communal hunting method known as the Buffalo Jump. They provided enormous rewards. A buffalo jump entailed luring a herd of bison over a cliff or a high hill, causing them to fall to their death. To entice the bison to the jump site, a young man would disguise himself with bison hides to act as a decoy. While the decoy continued to lure the herd in the correct direction, other runners dressed as wolves would appear behind the herd to create a sense of danger and drive them forward. Although these buffalo jumps were extremely dangerous, the payout was potentially thousands of pounds of meat. Some modern humans have developed an addiction to camel patterns, it seems. Of course, to the bane of many spouses, whose bedroom doors are overflowing with camel patterns for all occasions. A buddy of mine challenged me to a camo off. He said he was the camo king and no one had more than him. Little did he know what he was getting into. As you can tell by watching this, I won. But I lost when I bought some camo lingerie for my wife to wear. Unfortunately, I've not been able to find her since. The diversity of human camo is definitely a stroke of marketing genius. 
I'm guilty of the obsessive collection with the justification that just one pattern does not suit all environments. As far as Sasquatch, there have been numerous reports of people saying they would appear or disappear in an, in an instant. One moment they are there, then the next, they are gone. Some feel they are interdimensional beings that can shift out of our realm into another plane of existence. Now I've learned over the years that all things are possible, but not always probable. But who's to say? Are there colors that humans cannot see? Absolutely. Our eyes can definitely play tricks on us. Our perception of the world can be altered naturally or mm, unnaturally based upon the substance being utilized. In these optical illusions, you can see just how easily our eyes can be fooled. Let your brain think about all of that. Now, back to our regularly scheduled program. Humans have an evolutionary trait that allows most of us to detect the slightest of movements. This skill is what allowed our ancestors to survive in the predator-filled wilderness. While decked out in camo and motionless, a herd of deer walked within five yards of my position, and not a single one of the six does detected me. In another case, I had a squirrel run up a fallen tree trunk I was sitting on, and it didn't see me until it was about an arm's length away. I still laugh at the open mouth shock it had on its face when it realized I was there. It was priceless. If we take the phase shifting out of the equation for the moment and look at the definable nature of camouflage in the animal world, Sasquatch appears, or disappears, to be a master of cryptic coloration and skilled in the art of going totally motionless when necessary. A movie spoiler alert. You have probably seen the end of the Harry and the Henderson movie. Pause and fast forward if you don't want to know. Looking at the end shot of the forest, you see just that. A forest with a sad and lonely Harry walking away. Then suddenly, one by one, his family members move and to our delight, reveal themselves to us. Granted, this magic is brought to you by something that I do as my main profession, movie magic. But this was done without any computer trickery. The other three Sasquatch are standing motionless in the seam, hidden in plain sight. Only their sudden movement reveals their existence since your eye as a viewer was focused on Harry moving away. Then it shifts to the next moving Sasquatch and so on. Looking at this image, do you see anything out of the ordinary? I set up the camera, I moved into multiple locations, and then later took all of the pieces and put them back into one composite image. So a situation like this is definitely possible where something could be standing there in plain sight and you never see it. In visual effects, we use this sleight of hand gag to get us out of sometimes difficult or tricky situations. So things do hide in plain sight. I personally have had cases where I've seen something, looked away, 
and then lost it from my perception when looking back. We are designed to detect differences in pattern, but when the camouflage is too good, you could become dinner. If Sasquatch is truly a master of disguise, which I feel they are, then we might need to rely on our other senses, and especially our spidey senses, to alert us of its presence. I'm not saying we will have a wilderness psychic circle but certain medicinal weeds might be sacrificed to the woodland fairies as an offering. If Sasquatch decides to join the circle, there will be no objections from us. Unfortunately, I've not been able to locate any eyewitness accounts on this subject before releasing this segment. But this year, as Keegan, Trev, and myself go on our treks, we know we will definitely rely on all of our senses to warn us of any hidden presence and hopefully not dangers we might encounter. Please join us on our treks. See you guys. Until next time. <laughs>